Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Monday, December 30th, around 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2024. G3 geomagnetic storm is forecast for tomorrow, but the storming will enter its way all the way into the new year. And that means Aurora. And here you can see multiple CMEs coming together to make impact over a short period of time. We also have details on the large waves in Peru. It's been confirmed they are tsunami waves and we'll break it all down for you in just a moment. 91 ports have been closed indefinitely in Peru. Keep calm. It's boom time. An Arctic blast to freeze parts of the U.S. with record-breaking cold in the first weeks of 2025. The only problem with this forecasting with many people uh, on alternative media is that they looked at the models way too early. Some of the temperatures they're claiming, like minus 20 in Atlanta, are about 35 degrees off the mark. While it will be cold, it certainly will not be unprecedented in any way. So what is the big deal about the cold and storm pattern for January 2025? Well, According to the current models, it's going to come in two pulses. The first super cold will be January 5th and 6th, and then the second event, the 10th and the 11th. Now, how does it compare to other events? Well, it is not unprecedented. It is similar to four other years at the same exact time as far as the jet stream, including 2009, December 23rd, 2016, January 12th, 1977, January 9th, and 1985, January 19th. It, in fact, appear, appears to be a pattern, one that happens every 10, 15, or 20 years, and we are due for another one. The last pattern like this hasn't happened since 2016, and we're about 10 years out. And it is not going to produce record-breaking snow for many of the regions either. You want to talk about real record-breaking temperatures, let's talk about what happened today in 1917. On December 30th, 1917, 107 years ago, ho, 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 much of the eastern two-thirds of the nation was in the grips of record-smashing cold. This outbreak didn't merely top records for a specific calendar day, it broke all-time records. New York City plunged to 13 degrees below zero, their all-time record low at the time for any day. Only eclipsed one other day with 15 degrees below zero on the 9th of February of 1934. This event remains the all-time cold record for Charleston, West Virginia with minus 17 degrees and Roanoke, Virginia with minus 12 and I don't think we're going to see anything like that. It's looking like 16 in uh, Virginia, potentially, but not minus 16. Maybe minus 1 in the mountains. But certainly nothing approaching this cold. This is the coldest setup on January 12th. Um, with the current models, we have a cold January 11th, a cold January 10th and 9th, and then the first phase, as the cold dips down here, on Friday the 3rd, it's going to come in, and then Saturday the 4th, it's going to dip down into the southeast. It's only going to bring the freeze line down to the Florida state line, which happens every winter. So nothing unprecedented about this cold. And in fact, the minus 20 degree numbers they were picking up here are completely gone from the models. The only areas that will be sub-zero normally reach sub-zero temperatures, like we see here in the Central Plains, and they barely have minus 18. Last year, we saw some numbers in the minus 20 and 30 there in February, and none of that is coming in, except maybe for the January 10th plume, which could send North Dakota to minus 21, which is normal for this time of year. And as you can see from this model, even though there's a slight dip of the jet stream meridional bringing that arctic air down it's only the east coast and the central plains and portions of the south that will be cool the west is going to moderate and be well above normal take a look at this by january 11th it'll be minus 20 in north dakota and 70 in cali 
And let's take a quick look at the snowfall amounts. It has been epic day after day for the West. Continues to get pummeled. Here is the 72-hour totals. Ridiculous for areas in Idaho, in Oregon. Holy mackerel, it's going to be five, six feet up in this region. And if we just look at the 24-hour snowfall totals, it continues to fall. Here is just 24 hours of snow as of 6 a.m. this morning. And here is the 48-hour totals and then the 72-hour totals. So continuous snow day after day for the West. And it really does not look like it's going to let up anytime soon. And look at that, Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus in the models, January 8th and 9th getting pummeled with snow. I wonder how the wind turbines will function at that time. And before we walk through the GFS model day by day, let's go over the weather forecast for tomorrow. Critical fire weather concerns, storm tracking across the plains. A combination of strong winds and dry conditions and above normal temperatures will result in elevated to critical fire weather concerns for the southern plains and portions of Southern California. That has, in fact, expired. This is part of a storm system that is tracking across the central plains with occasional snow showers and heavier snow from the Rockies through the central and northern plains. And here we are over at the GFS model. And let's take a look at what that looks at like right now. So here is the current weather pattern. You can see all the moisture is now off the East Coast. Three hours from now, we're going to see snow and rain moving through the central U.S. tonight. Three, six hours. But by morning, that system will be bombing out at 996 and become the next nor'easter here for Wednesday and Thursday as it moves up the coast, bringing snow only to the western regions and higher elevations of the northeast. Anything on the coast should be mostly rain. More system after system moves into the Pacific Northwest as this one develops in the center of the country with the lowest temperatures in the U.S. all season. That means it's going to be lots of snow for areas that haven't gotten snow. And that snow is going to move east the 6th, the 7th, and the 8th. And maybe even another system behind that. So this is far out on the model. But if we take a look at the total snowfall, we can get a better idea of what's going to happen day by day. Here is your Monday into Tuesday and into Wednesday and Thursday of this week. You can see the snow piling up in the Northeast day after day, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So heavy snow for all of the second half of the week for the Northeast as a system moves through the Central Plains for the weekend. Here is Friday and into Saturday there and more snow for the northeast and west and system after system tracking across the u.s through mid-january is going to bring some significant snow totals for many areas that haven't seen snow for a while like this especially arkansas so while the temperatures may be cold they won't be that cold as it seemed a day or so ago in the models but even though it's below freezing, it doesn't matter. It just needs to be 31 degrees to, fr to snow. And it looks like, well, Arkansas could be seeing some record-setting numbers as well as Minnesota, Indiana, and areas of Tennessee, as well as Kentucky. Getting plucky. Shut up, Al! Get in your hole! Al Gore gets no bud cake tonight. And it's not just the U.S. experiencing cold. There is cold all over, in, including Dal Lake that froze over. Holy macaroni. This is in India, in Delhi. It's dealing with a persistent, chilly, heavy December rain. Breaks a 15-year-old precipitation record. The cold snap recently tanked temperatures to a max of just 14.6 C, marking the city's coldest, coldest December in five years. Delhi's chill stands out when compared to recent cold December days. There you can see the 2024 numbers at 14.6 C, eclipsing all the numbers in the last five years. And that's not all. The freezing of Dal Lake has disruptive daily like as locals struggle to free their boats from the icy surface. Many locals have resorted to lighting bonfires and using traditional kangris or earthen pots filled with hot ash for warmth. Demand for winter clothing and blankets has surged amid temperatures as low as 18, negative 18 C in some parts of the country. Holy macaroni. And not only that, take a look at this. 
Arctic ice at 30-year norms, as well as Antarctic ice, has reached the 30-year norm. So all the fear-mongering, complete nonsense, as all of the ice in the Arctic and Antarctic have recovered to 30-year averages. Holy macaroni. How do you like them apples? Antarctic ice area is the same it's been, on average, since records have been kept. Now let's talk about huge waves in Peru. It was, in fact, a tsunami wave that came in a wave front of six waves. Four initial waves were the most detectable, and the second wave was the largest. In one region, just offshore of the landslide, the tsunami delivered a 31-foot wave. And as we traveled 50 kilometers north and south of the landslide, the waves were shorter in the order of 10 to 20 feet and so on. But an entire length of coastline over 1,000 kilometers was effective and 91 ports indefinitely closed because the piers and everything was reworked and destroyed, including ships. The tsunami hit the coast of Peru, causing the closure of 91 ports. High waves have destroyed coastal areas in the sea-surged inland. Several meter-high waves have impacted beaches such as Zoritos, Mancora, Lobitos, El Nuro, Cabo Blanco, and the port of Cayón, as well as Anquion. Since Friday, the northern coast of Peru has been experiencing these unusually high waves, which are damaging and sinking fishing boats. No, they were a series of waves. Uh, due to one landslide. This was not due to seismic activity, but a turbidity current. You see, Peru is located right on the continental slope and shelf, and it was slope deposits, an instability there that caused a displacement in seawater that caused the tsunami to rush inland. This is one of the three main mechanisms for tsunami, and we've seen, well, all of them in our lifetime. This is just one of the more interesting versions of tsunami that are very hard to detect until well after the waves destroy 91 ports indefinitely. The good news, it wasn't that big of a landslide. The waves only reached 10 meters and in a very small portion. This could have been much worse and there was very little loss of life as far as we have heard. The Directorate of Hygrography and Navigation in Peru Navy issued a final alert indicating that this phenomenon will continue until January 2025. So apparently more landslides may be afoot. And the reason that is, is because after you get one turbidity current, you have destabilized the shelf and there may be others that follow. So our hearts and prayers go out to those in Peru. And hopefully this wasn't a precursor to a bigger turbidity current because that would mean a bigger tsunami is coming seismic update very few quakes of note we've got this seismic swarm happening in ethiopia as a thousand kilometer rift has opened up uh well actually hasn't completely opened up there is magma filling a dike that is this long and there is some eruptive activity here and this is the newly active rift that will open up a new ocean here on the eastern side of Africa. It's going to take millions of years, but it is kicking up in high gear. Worldwide volcano news, we've got Suanosima puffing and passing the 6,000-foot Nevada de Cruz, 23,000-foot today. Sakurajima, 7,000-foot blast there. Suanosima to 7,000-foot. Fuego, ongoing volcanic ash. Conleon, 9,000 foot puff there. Popo to 21,000 foot. Ibu on the list, 6,000 foot blast today. Sabancaya, volcanic ash reported. Santa Guito also on the list. Semaru, who knew? Now you do. 15,000 foot puff today. Fuego to 15. Ibu to 14. Conleon, volcanic ash cloud unknown. Popo to 18,000 foot. We've got Semaru to 15,000 foot and wrapping up the list, Santa Guito, with sporadic ash emissions. 
Space weather is the big news as we are awaiting a G3 geomagnetic storm to kick off in just about 24 hours. The geomagnetic storming will last through New Year's Day and it's care of several M flares uh, coming from multiple active regions. None of this is due to the X flare. So if you don't know how to follow the sun and determine the difference between a flare and a CME, you've got a long way to go. So just listen to the channels that have the right information, like ours, that know how to read the telemetry because we've been doing it for a decade now. So what we have here is multiple M flares, two coming off one after another here, one, two. They cannibalize each other. A third is behind, and they all reach Earth about the same time tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening. Based on the speed they are arriving, it could happen at the perfect time New Year's Eve for North America in the evening and light up the auroras for the northern states. Let's take a look at the aurora forecast, shall we? Here is tonight's aurora forecast, which is actually tomorrow. And tomorrow night's forecast was actually New Year's Day. It looks like both of them are spectacular and they both have a view line all the way down into Iowa. So if you've got a chance and clear skies, Make sure to get out and look up and stay tuned to our channel for any necessary updates on the aurora and the geomagnetic storm. Now, this is just a G3 geomagnetic storm and short-lived. No major X flares. There is no chance of a grid down scenario or anything like that. Not even close. So anyone claiming that is clearly uninformed or just looking for clicks. So probably steer away from those channels. And here we can see the WSA Enlil Spiral showing all of those flares reaching us and moving through through New Year's Day. All the plasma should be through Earth by the end of the first day of the new year. And if you haven't heard, the North Pole has a new position. Yeah, the magnetic North Pole has rapidly moved from northern Canada and now rapidly moving towards Siberia. The good news, it's slowing down. Since the 1830s, the North Magnetic Pole on Earth has relocated some 2,250 kilometers, over 1,400 miles. And most of that has happened in the last two decades. Did you know that? The rate of pole movement increased from less than 15 kilometers per year to over 50 to 60 kilometers per year in 2005. Yeah, it's crazy. It got so, the pole was moving so rapidly, the world magnetic model had to change its updates from 10 years to five years to four years. And now here we are. The current behavior of the magnetic north is something that geomagnetists have never observed before. Magnetic north has been moving slowly around Canada since 1500. But in the past 20 years, it has accelerated towards Siberia, increasing in speed every year until about five years ago, when it suddenly decelerated from 50 to 35 kilometers per year, still moving quite rapidly. But the drop from 50 to 35 kilometers per year is the biggest deceleration in speed that scientists have ever witnessed. I wonder what that means. Well, it probably means that the speed speeds up, slows down, and speeds up again. And the next rapid speed up because it's all moving in the same direction, is coming soon. And that will be a boom to knowledge. Please share the video. When will the magnetic field speed up as it weakens and rapidly moves towards the equator is anyone's guess. But don't be scared. Be prepared and continue to watch the channel for more information. Hit the thumbs up. It's free. It helps with the Al Gore rhythm. Subscribe to the channel we need you as a subscriber so you can get all the updates. Hit the bell and you will be informed on all of our podcasts. Be safe. We love you. And that is a boom. Mm -hmm.